Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1207. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 1206 to 1209 to follow along, click on the link below the video. In this video, we got to talk about percentile. Here are some scores, and notice they're sorted. And a percentile will create a marker in that sorted list that divides the sets into two parts with about P percentage below the marker and 1 minus P percentage above the marker. So if I say the 90th percentile, what I want is a marker in this sorted list that will divide it 90% below that marker and 10% above. Now the point of this video is to look at the percentile dot EXC exclusive and percentile dot INC inclusive. And guess what? They're going to calculate two different answers. If we look right here, here's the 90th position, it's 319. And the 91st position, it's 323. Those are the scores. These are the positions. And you notice both these values are right in between there. But how did they get like that? And how are they calculating? Now up here, I have percentile.exe. That means exclusive. That means it excludes percentile 0% and 100%. You cannot calculate the min and the max when you're using percentile.exe. However, when you're using percentile INC, that means inclusive. That means if you put percentile 0 or 100%, it'll calculate the min and the max. Now, quartile is a related function. This quartile function divides the set into four parts using three markers, which represent percentile 25, 50, and 75%. Now, EXC, just like the EXC up here, means exclusive. It means the min and max value cannot be found. You can only enter 1, 2, and 3 for quartile 1, 2, and 3. Quartile inclusive. Inclusive, that means 0 is going to be min. 1 is quartile 1, 2 is quartile 3, 3 is quartile 3, and 4 is the max. Now, this function is very useful sometimes because when you're doing a five number summary, you're going to need the min, quartile 1, 2, 3, and the max. So let's look at the algorithms for calculating the position. Now, right off the bat, you might say, here we have a 100 count. So I went ahead and counted all these scores. There's 100 of them, right? Well, why not just use n times p? Well, in fact, some people do use this formula to calculate the percentile position. No problem. It says 90. Our value would be 319. If I were going to calculate this longhand, I would just say, hey, according to this formula right here, 319 will be our marker that divides the sorted set into about 90% below and 10% above. Now, here is a way that we can get around this 90. Because notice, if I actually were to count this, there's 10 values above. And 10 divided by 100 will give you 10%, which is perfect. But notice, if that's the actual marker, then that means 11 values here and 89 values. So 89% of the values would be below the marker. Now, it's perfectly all right because our phrase is going to be about p and about 1 minus p. So sometimes people use that as a method of calculating percentile. Here's a way to get around, at least temporarily, that uh, 10 above and 89 below. We can say n plus 1. So we say equals n plus 1. Close parentheses. In our case, it gives us 101. And when we multiply it by 90%, okay. and that's the actual algorithm that exclusive uses, it gives us 90.9. .9. So if we were going to go between 90 and 91, our value would be right in between there. Now, actually, to calculate the 90.9 .9 position, we'd actually have to calculate the difference between this, which is 4 multiply it by 0.9 and add it to this 319. So here's how we would do that longhand. Equals, well, we still need the 319 because we're, we're past the 90th value. And we're going to add to it. Well, we got to take the difference. I'm taking the next value in the data set minus the 90th position in parentheses. And I'm going to multiply it by that 0.9. 
and that will give me exactly the same value as the percentile dot exclusive function. Now let's look at the formula for calculating the position for percentile dot inclusive. Here it is. We're going to take equals the actual n times the p, kind of looks like this first one here, but we're going to add a little bit to it. And by adding this little bit, which is 1 minus the percentile, this little adjustment here will allow us to get the min and the max. When I hit Control Enter, it's actually sucking the format there. So I'm going to use the general number format to wipe it all away, which is right there. Or I can use the keyboard Control Shift Grave Accent or tilde. So in our case here for inclusive, we want 90.1. So the 90th point one position is still between there. If we were doing it longhand, we'd say, hey, give me the 90th plus whatever the difference is, 323 minus 319 times the point 0.1, 319.4. Now, in both cases, you could see we get the same exact thing. And the functions themselves, of course, is what we would do not doing it longhand. Equals percentile dot exclusive, the whole array, Control Shift down arrow, Control backspace to jump back to the active cell, comma and the K, that just means the percentile. And when I hit Enter, I get exactly the same thing. Now for inclusive equals PER, and I'm using the inclusive. Same exact formula, Control Shift down arrow, Control backspace, comma this 90%. But this one will use this particular algorithm here. And so we get 319. Now let's see what happens if we change this to 0%. Instantly, we're going to get a num error for our percentile.exe because that is not allowed. But percentile.inc absolutely went down. And I'm going to control down arrow and found the min. Control up arrow. And if we look at how this calculates, right? it took 100 times 0%. So 100 times 0% 0 is 0. So the first part of this algorithm got 0 plus 1 minus 0%, boom, that's how we got the 1. That's the position. That's how the percentile.inc works. Now if I change this to 100%, I still get a num error for the dot .exe, because that's not allowed. But here I got 346, which is exactly the max. And if you look at this algorithm, well, n times 100% is 100. That means the position plus, well, 1 minus 100% is 0, so it adds 0. So that's how the I and C with this algorithm for position can get the min and the max. Now I'm going to change this to 75% and see that here's the two positions, 75.75, .75, so 75% of the way through the interval right, to get the position. And this one went 25%. If we were to go down and look at the 75th position here, right? So we're going through this interval between 75 and 76th position. So we can see there's the positions, and there are the two values we get, slightly different values. Now I wanted to do the 75% because now we can look at quartile. And I put quartile 3 over here, so I can simply say equals quartile and exc. You still have to highlight the same scores, and they don't have to be sorted. I only sorted them to help us see as we were doing things by hand. But top cell, Control Shift down arrow, Control backspace to jump back to the active cell, comma, and check out this drop down. One, two, three. Because it's exclusive, it's only going to allow you one, two, or three. But when I put a three in, that's quartile three. Control Enter, exactly the same as percentile 75%. If we do this down here for inclusive, but this time I'm going to use quartile.inc. I have to highlight, Control Shift down arrow, Control backspace, comma and comma and check that out. Zero to four. So the inclusive will be polite and let you know you can do the min and the max. I'm simply going to select the three over here. Control Enter, exactly the same thing as percentile.inc at 75%.
Now, we want to look at the inclusive and exclusive when doing five number summaries. And actually, watch this. I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to have to use this range a bunch, and I don't want to have to keep coming up here and highlighting. So I'm going to click the cell at the top that says Scores. That's the field name or the column header. Control-Shift, down arrow to highlight all the way to the bottom. And instead of going to Formulas, Create from Selection, which will create a name, I'm going to use that keyboard. You can see it in that screen tip there. Control-Shift, F3. So you're ready? Control-Shift, F3. And it's asking, hey, where do you want the name for this range to come from? Come from the top row, which has scores. I click OK. Now, this whole range, if I come up to the name box, and click Scores. That whole range is called Scores now, all the way down. Now I don't have to keep highlighting it. So you ready? I want to look at percentile.inc. And notice I have 0 all the way to 1 equals percentile.inclusive. And I'm going to type SC. And I can see my little dog tag icon. That means the define name scores, comma. And I have my 0. That's a relative cell reference. Control Enter. And when I copy it down, you've got to be kidding me. Look at that. It got min, quartile 1, quartile 2, quartile 3, and the max. If I were to try this with the percentile.exclusive, SC tab, comma, and I'm going to highlight that empty cell for a second. Control Enter, I'm going to get a num error. I will copy this down. If I were to put a 0 here in hopes, it's just not going to work. 0 and 100% do not work. Quartile.inc, the same thing, except for here we're going to put 0 for min, 4 for max. And then 1, 2, 3 is the same as the other quartile function. The inclusive SC tab, comma, arrow to get that 0. That means the min, Control Enter, and copy it down. I love using the INC for my five number summaries. And finally, if we were to use this for EXC, SC tab, comma, is just not going to work. 0 and 4 here. It's just not going to work. But inclusive will. Now, on a small data set, if you're doing inclusive and exclusive, you can get some real differences between all of your values calculated from both of the functions. But in general, from a large data set, you're not going to have too much trouble. So in this video, we saw how to use percentile exclusive and inclusive, and quartile exclusive and inclusive, and looked at the algorithms for how each one is calculated, and even our five number summary. All right, we'll see you next video.